So what's expected the next few days, Rebecca? Well, there is this sort of barrage of key tests, as you say, that are coming up this week. So two key big ones are Evergrande. Um, we're going to get the results of a vote to extend one of its onshore uh, onshore bonds. Now, if we don't get that and if the proposal isn't passed, it could be the first default by Evergrande on a local bond. Um, and away from Evergrande, we are also seeing about $376 million worth of various different payments from Shimao. Um, sources telling us that Shimao is prepared to make its local bond payment but it also has a series of coupons due on uh, dollar bonds um, as well. So we're looking at those this week. And Yvonne, as you say, there is still attention paid to this Guangzhou RNF exchange uh, and consent solicitation. Quite a controversial deal. Um, be, our sort of Bloomberg intelligence analysts calling it a lowball offer. Um, and so that is actually still very much being discussed uh, this week in the market as well. Um, and then looking forward kind of into the broader uh, uh, month of January, we're really kind of looking at stress once again rising um, through the end of the month because of these sort of payments. Rebecca, I want to talk about bank exposure now because you have the world's worst performing banking stock. We're, China, we're talking China Minsheng Bank. And we're also talking about the fact that the bank also lent out billions to Evergrande. Can I put those two things together? Absolutely. So the bank, you know, source is telling us that it's really in damage control mode. It does look like it's in hot water because of this strategy of, of lending um, loans to Evergrande and other high-risk property developers, said to have about $20 billion worth of exposure to those high-risk developers. And I think that, you know, as you say, the really key story here is that as we go into 2022, the story is going to shift. It's not just going to be about how much debt property firms owe and whether they can roll it over. It's going to be more about who actually actually owns this debt and on the other side of this who is going to be responsible and whether or not they're going to actually be able to weather this kind of stress and this kind of payment misses um, particularly when it comes to these sort of weaker banks and weaker financial institutions.